1,000 single family homes will generate more than 3,000 jobs. It's going to bring approximately 145 million in wages and more than 89 million in federal, state, and local tax revenues. We're all facing a significant growing labor shortage in all facets of the residential construction sector that could and may and probably will impede the housing and economic recovery, according to a recent study given to us by the NHAB. Nationally, labor shortages are resulting in higher wages for subcontractor bids to secure projects, consequently raising home prices and increased inflation, which in turn will eventually increase interest rates. Delays in completing projects on time, turning down some projects, or lost or canceled sales. Part of the reason for the labor shortages can be attributed to the fact that many skilled residential construction workers were forced to seek employment elsewhere during the recession and are not currently interested in coming back to work. I think hopefully this is a sustainable recovery and we may get some of those laborers back, but uh, I know we had a carpenter, uh, I'll never forget this, about uh, a year ago, we had a carpenter at one point had 173 union employees in 2006. Um, he was about 49 years old, and when I saw him at Panera's, he had a belt on with a hammer and he had three employees. Our discussion today will feature a discussion of construction labor shortages, locally featuring leaders from the construction trades, high school, and technical training programs, and a premier Hispanic social service organization. This discussion will be foundational to the Builders Council effort to ensure a labor pipeline of educated and dedicated employees. We as a council will be developing strategies to increase the construction labor pool and make a construction career an appealing option. Um, I, I had the incredible pleasure yesterday of being with Scott Walker for about an hour and a half. And Scott, um, <coughs> Scott being the visionary that he is, had five, uh, significant points that he was talking about, with job growth being one of the significant points. He said that, you know, if you're a European and you find out that your child wants to get into uh, our industry or become a machinist, they are just as proud as their, of their son and daughter that wants to get into the industry as they are of their child that wants to go get a four-year education. Um, Obviously, the kids that are going to get a four-year education are coming out of college with significant debt. And many of those um, aren't finding jobs, or their jobs they're finding are at a significantly lower income than what they could have made had they come into our industry or another. Um, I think it's a, uh, it, it's, a, it's a national social problem. We as parents, um, have the opportunity to change uh, the perception of your child potentially wanting to get into the industry. I know my uh, son graduated from Maryland High School, and of every friend that he had, uh, he was the captain of the football team and played on the basketball team, every friend that he had, only one went into the automotive industry to be a mechanic. Everyone else went to college. Um, so, you know, it says a lot about uh, even myself as a parent um, and changing my demeanor. So, um, I'm really proud to introduce our panel today. I'll, I'll go across and let you guys uh, go ahead and um, give a brief description of who you are and um, kind of what you have. So. Um, my name is Joe Weisling. I'm the training, <coughs> the training coordinator for the Southeast Wisconsin Carpentry Training Center. That is the apprenticeship program for carpenters, millwrights, pile drivers, floor coverers, and cabinet makers of Southeast Wisconsin. I'm a carpenter for 38 years. No, really, I am. Those chubby guys don't show our age. But uh, I've been in this industry and have been around long enough to see the ebbs and flows of this industry. Um, if I could just build on what was going on. Um, a few years ago, a study was done uh, that only 4% of college graduates with a four and a half to five year baccalaureate degree 
will make more money than an apprentice trained trades worker in southeast Wisconsin. It's a scary statistic that goes undone. It goes unmentioned. The other thing about it as well is that when individuals go into college, if I use the University of Wisconsin website, we see at the end of four years the average college grad uh, encumbers an owed debt of somewhere around $67,000. That's using the UW numbers. But yet an apprentice trained uh, trades worker after four years of college has a net growth of about a quarter of a million dollars, believe it or not, when you start figuring in the wages, fringe benefits, educational costs, and everything else that's affiliated with it. Why we're so reluctant to embrace <coughs> that whole career set, uh, we have some ideas that uh, hopefully we'll be able to share and uh, that later date. Uh, grateful. Thank you, Joe. Um, Greg? I'm Greg Jones. I'm the CEO at Dave Jones Incorporated. We're a full service plumbing, heating, cooling, and fire protection um, company. I'm a master plumber by trade. I served a five year apprenticeship out of high school and moved into management from there. Um, we primarily work in the Milwaukee and Madison markets, but we also work statewide and a few projects out of state. We currently have 175 employees, um, and our majority of our work is new construction, single family homes, multi family, and senior housing. Um, right now, we're in our second generation. We're going through succession planning right now. My dad started the company in 1977 in his garage. My name is Bill Bullock. I'm the associate dean of, at WCTC in the programs I manage are in the apprenticeship instruction technology area. Programs of most interest to the people in attendance would be architecture, carpentry, as well as we started a new program at HVC about a year ago. The apprenticeships and the building trades I manage are the ABC plumbing, concrete finisher, as well as the third one is the uh, ABC electrical apprenticeship programs. And, and if you would use me as an example, my grandfather was a metal worker, my father was a tool and die maker, I was a tool and die maker, and that's where the skilled trades ended in my family also. Tom, my son and daughter could not have had a better experience in high school. I love it. Oh, very good. Go very good. Uh, my name is Tom Whelan. I am the department chair over at Arrowhead High School. I'm on a number of different boards. I work for the uh, State Manufacturing Board. Um, I'm a master teacher through uh, our National Project Lead the Way program through uh, Indiana, where I teach at Auburn University and the Milwaukee School of Engineering, uh, training engineering teachers across the country from K through K through 12 uh, programs. Recently, over the last couple of years, we've tried to make a connection uh, where our K-8 schools were lacking considerably in understanding what technology was, was or what, what manufacturing was. So what we ended up doing here this past year is we've implemented uh, what they call a Project Lead the Way. It's called the GTT program that basically establishes a, a school with not only manufacturing or hands-on type of activities, problem-solving activities, engineering concepts and design processes, and what we've done is we've implemented that into all of our K-8 schools. We have seven of them. And right now, every, most every kid that's going to come into Arrowhead anyways will have, uh, will have that program because we're implementing it along with the state standards and their science programs. So schools like Merton, for example, every kid that walks through their sixth grade, their seventh grade, and eighth grade program will have this GTT training and project lead the way. So that'll be a nice, nice asset to what we're doing. We currently have just in our probably our tech ed program about 1,800 students. Um, just in our engineering program, we get about 450. We're thinking those numbers will probably double in the next probably four years, um, trying to get that word out to our feeder schools of what is important. And uh, so that's the biggest thing that we're trying to do at Arrowhead. It's interesting that uh, you know I'm on, the, on the board for manufacturing at WCTC as well, and and I was at a, a conference here this past week with uh, with Rebecca Clayfish, and one of the things that was mentioned was. It's interesting to see how many of my kids, when I ask them to raise their hands, how many of them had their parents or, or an adult say, what college are you going to? Instead of saying, what do you want to actually do for a living? And I think that that's part of what we need to get across to not only our kids, but to the parents. Great observation. Jose? Jose Vasquez with La Casa de Esperanza. I'm new in a sense. Hope they'll still allow me to do that. I've only been there since August. Um, I uh, have, my background is actually in, in adult education. I used to be an administrator at Waukesha County Technical College many, many years ago. 
and then also uh, retired from the university system as an administrator. And the previous governor at the uh, matter was appointing me originally to the Wisconsin Technical College System Board of Directors. And then he really got uh, a little stir crazy and appointed me to the Board of Regents, which I serve on right now. And one of my duties as a member of the Board of Regents at this moment is to represent the regions on the Wisconsin Technical College system. Uh, and that's where really my first love for adult education came, it was through the uh, adult education system, the technical college system. Uh, if I could just piggyback on what Jonathan was saying, I think one of the things that, that has caused the problem of disparity between uh, vocational technical adult education and university is how this country measures success. And one of those measures of success, unfortunately, is do you have a college degree, yes or no? And the minute you say no, in this country, we don't consider you to be a successful person. It doesn't matter what your income is. It doesn't matter what your life experience is on. And you know, there's a way to try to change that as a country, we can have multiple definitions of success. It just does not have to be, do you have yes or no, and I think that all of us can play a your part. I hope that uh, this afternoon I'm going to pique your thinking in two areas. One is the role of social service agencies in economic development, specifically jobs and in filling jobs. And the second one is what is happening within the Hispanic community, nationally and locally, and help have you think about that group slightly different than what you may be thinking about uh, whenever they're Very well spoken. Brian? Uh, Brian Krieger with LH Krieger and Son. We are a uh, residential exterior contractor. Um, my dad started the company back in 1981, I believe. Second generation. Uh, we employ about, um, currently about 30 employees, um, looking to hire uh, quite a few more. And um, what I really find interesting is, uh, as John said, was the dynamic of how people perceive the construction <coughs> construction trades and working for those trades, we've seen a great decline of younger people wanting to come on to our company, learn our trade on um, exteriors, roofing, siding, and those types of things. And it's a real concern to have that generational gap because we do offer, um, as I think, good quality paying jobs, um, good family jobs that people just don't realize that are out there. And I think one of the other interesting st statistics Two of them really um, come to mind is that 60% of all college graduates do not work in the field that they studied for. And 40% of college graduates settle for a job that's not um, anything that their college degree required. It's just a normal, good paying job that they didn't need to uh, have all that college debt to get in the first place. And I think some of those things, uh, if the younger generation would realize some of that, would really be nice. Steve, since you're here, do you want to add anything and uh, chime in? Um, any of you have questions for me, I'd be fine. Uh, I am Steve Olson. I do teach over at Oconomowoc High School uh, in the trades. Uh, believe it or not, I've been in there for 18 years. Um, kind of scary when I think about that. Uh, but I would say, you know, when I listen to a lot of the stuff in the panel, and I'm sure a lot of you, uh, the big thing is getting interest there with the kids. Uh, maybe even changing just a little bit of perception administratively in the schools that hey, the trades are a viable place where a kid can go and get a future. It's going to be productive. It's going to be well worth it. Um, and if you look at one of the most rewarding careers, um, I can remember back 10 years ago, kind of going through a battle just to keep the trades in the high school because there was a big push at that point in time to try to get them out of there, Let's do college found things, uh, things like that. And we've really kind of grown a program over there that's pretty solid. Uh, but the one thing, I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of questions, um, but the biggest thing I think that from my standpoint of what I'm doing as a job, you got to have partnerships. you got to have people that are also helping you outside. We have partnered with WCTC. Uh, our kids are getting transferred to credit there. Um, but that's basically a construction carpentry portion. Uh, if you guys want to listen to the room and everybody that's involved in here, 
I mean, there are trades. There are more than just carpenters out there in the trade. I mean, there are just avenues upon avenues for kids to take and choose what they want. Now, that's the big concern, is how do you get the kid to have an understanding of, hey, there is work, there is fun, there is this, there is, you know, maybe even the marketing standpoint from construction. Um, there's a lot of different avenues out there for the kid to grow, to see, to explore. Um, and I think partnerships, back to what I was saying, is huge. I mean, we've teamed with Tim O'Brien, and I know Dave Jones over there. We've worked with their guys in plumbing. You, know, you, you need people out there in the trades talking, showing, uh, getting kids interested. And it doesn't just come from one person saying it. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at, what I'm doing, kind of maybe the purpose. I really want to sit in on this and listen. Uh, but if you guys have any ideas for me, um, as I mentioned yesterday, I was with, uh, I had the pleasure to be with Scott Parker for a while, and um, asked Andrew to attend so he could pass back to Scott um, some of the things that we're learning from here. Andrew, I won't put you on the spot now unless you want to uh, offer something, but maybe if you had a few minutes afterwards to talk about what you learned and um, what Scott might use with this or if anyone who might use with this. But, I'm sure we'd love to hear it. Absolutely. Thanks for the invitation. I'm 